Hello everyone. Today's going to be a DIY video on how to fix a refrigerator that may not be turning on. This morning I get up and I have the refrigerator power lights are on but there is no cooling. I tried unplugging it and plugging it back in. I heard a series of clicks on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off, and then off. So what I have here is a... Um, the, the power board for uh, for this particular refrigerator, this is a, an Electrolux side-by-side uh, -side refrigerator. And this is located underneath the unit. So if you take the, the, the toe kick plate off the bottom, there's going to be a, a box like this. It's, it slides up underneath and is bolted up. And it has long cables so you can pull it out through the front. Those cables exit out the back here. But when I'm looking at this... I'm noticing that, uh, let me turn the torch on for you guys so you guys can see. So what I'm noticing is that there's a lot of uh, dust that has accumulated on a lot of these parts. And uh, anyway, dust by itself is not so much a problem, but uh, dust combined with moisture is a problem because the dust will bridge a lot of these connections and can cause you a lot of problems. Similar to a motherboard and a computer, if you have a, your computer close to a dusty area, usually if it's on the floor, it's going to uh, pick up a lot of dust and uh, periodically it's going to need to be blown out. And usually I can tell on my particular, like look right here, see those, those, those connections down there, how they're bridged? Yeah, that's, uh, that's probably the cause of the problem right there. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to get some compressed air, just blow the hell out of this, get all this stuff out of here. And if you guys are having a similar problem, this this will save you thousands of dollars because uh, to replace one of these power boards and, and a, a appliance repair guy, he'll just come out to your house, he'll pull this thing out, and he'll tell you, uh, you know, 600 bucks, uh, and uh, we got to order it. And, they you know, they won't take the time to blow it out, to clean or anything, but these these parts are pretty robust. And I suspect that when I blow it out, it is going to work. But let me go ahead and do that, and I'll uh, confirm my theory here shortly. All right, there you have it. So it's all it's all blown out. You can see now that everything is nice and clean. Uh, nothing is bridging any of these connections anymore. So let's go ahead and hook this thing back up, and hopefully everything will work. Okay, so here's the here's the where the board goes. So this is the bottom part of the refrigerator. This is on the freezer side, and again, this is a uh, Electrolux refrigerator. I'm sure that uh, Frigidaire refrigerators will be the same since it's the same company. They probably use similar boards, and uh, the way these cables go is they just push over here. They'll have a, a a wire tie to keep them from from sliding back out, and then they also have a retainer that goes on top. So I'm just going to get these guys back into position here and then plug them back in. So all we're doing here guys is just plugging these things back in. They can only go in one way so there's one. And there's a little uh, plug that goes, let me see if I show you guys this one. This little one goes in here. And that's it. All we gotta do is just push these guys back down here. You gotta be careful not to damage any of these components that are in there. That's it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it on now first and check it. Before what it was doing was just clicking on and off. We'll see if it just clicks on and, and stays running. Nope. So I got the same problem. All right, guys. So here's where we're at. It wasn't the dust problem that was causing the power board to to not stay on. It turns out it was a bad capacitor. After closer inspection, I noticed that there was a capacitor that uh, was bulging at the uh, 
the little uh, seams that they that they build into these capacitors on the top so that you can visually tell if there's a problem with one uh, one of them was expanded quite a bit and I believe that's the source of the problem I haven't gotten into actually repairing the power board but in the meantime I needed to figure out a way to get this refrigerator running since uh, I was unable to get a replacement capacitor until just uh, a few hours ago uh, Amazon was running deliveries on Monday today Labor Day and they were uh, delivered around 7 30 p.m. so uh, from Friday to till today I've been running this refrigerator without the power board so if you if you can see here so these are these are the connections for the power board and uh, uh, currently what you see here is so this wire that's coming down here is coming from the fan that sits inside the freezer compartment so I'll show you guys uh, I'll show you guys what's going on inside so you can so you can see okay so you can you can hear that it's running right so I removed the ice maker uh, taped up those those uh, those connection ports there for the ice maker, the power plug, and, and, and everything else. Now the problem with running the refrigerator this way is that there's no way to regulate the temperature in the freezer compartment or the refrigerator. Obviously in the freezer you want everything to be cold, right? But in the refrigerator compartment you don't want all your food frozen, which uh, is the case uh, for me. So let me, let me show you in the refrigerator. So in the refrigerator section, excuse my... Uh, messy stuff in here so in the refrigerator let's see what the current temperature in the refrigerator is so it's showing it's showing a temperature of 30 31 degrees well, it's, it's going up now because I got the door open but it, it, it's getting down to like 25 degrees inside the refrigerator which is way too cold and if you can see uh, you, know, you got frost and stuff that's building up here so there is no defrost mechanism working currently because it's just running bare bones uh, but I'll show you guys exactly what I had to do to get this thing working again uh, temporarily until the repairs are made all right so like I said this this cable coming out of here and I'll go ahead and unload the freezer compartment and take it all apart so I can show you but this cable right now is uh, going to the fan motor that is in the freezer compartment. It's the one that pulls the air f uh, from the bottom of the freezer through the the coils uh, coming from the uh, compressor and then up and into the refrigerator side. Uh, and then another thing that I got going over here is this this is the other end of that uh, the other end of that wire where it plugs in. So this wire uh, this fan that's inside the freezer compartment that directs the air into the freezer and into the refrigerator is a 12 volt fan. So you can't just hook this thing up to an AC uh, outlet directly. You have to uh, hook it up to some kind of a power supply. So I have a lot of leftover power supplies from laptops and whatnot. So once I determined that it is a 12 volt fan inside the uh, freezer compartment and how I determined that was using the model number that was on the part I just did a quick Google search it showed hey it's a Panasonic fan model whatever it is and it gave me a schematic so I knew all the technical details about this fan there was three wires that you use it's a four wire fan system three of the wires you use uh, one is a red wire one is a, a yellow wire and then you have a, a brown wire so the brown wire for the freezer fan is the ground and then the yellow and red wire need to be combined to 12 volt positive uh, DC right uh, so this cord this uh, cable wraps around here and it goes to this all right so um, going back to this this connection so this is a uh, a laptop an old laptop power supply uh, so it's 12 volts uh, and I believe it's uh, it's like a 4 amp uh, power supply and uh, so this is what's powering the freezer fan so what I needed to do in this 
in this case is, is I had the wire directly into my start capacitor. So that's these two black wires that I'm pulling on here. All you have to do is just hook that up to an extension cord and uh, your, your compressor will, will kick on as soon as you power it on. If for some reason your start capacitor and uh, or start relay is not working, you can still start the compressor by hooking it up to, uh, to, to an extension cord. So all you would do is take one side of your AC power cord, connect it to the top pin where this black wire is currently connected, and then you're going to take the other lead that's left over, and you're going to connect it to where the red wire is, which is the bottom pin closest to the back of the refrigerator, which is facing my finger. Uh, and then the other white wire, the one that's the lower pin closest to the inside of the refrigerator, uh, opposite my finger, that wire gets a momentary connection to the same wire that you have connected to the red wire. So you would just tap that that pin to uh, to the to that power wire, and the compressor will start, and the compressor will continue running until you unplug it from the power or use a switch or however it is that you're turning your power on and off. So with or without a start capacitor, you, you can start your uh, compressor in your refrigerator. So I found this to be very interesting uh, because there's a lot of complicated electronics in a lot of these refrigerators and really uh, they, they, all they, they serve a purpose is to regulate the temperature and pretty much that's it. But if you had to start your compressor and run your refrigerator in, in an emergency situation to keep your food from spoiling, you can start it up providing your compressor is uh, in good shape and, and is not the, the cause of the fault. And uh, doing a, a YouTube search, you'll find more information on that. Uh, another thing you also have to uh, switch on is the... Uh, the, the fan for the cooling coils. So normally, these coils, if you had an inexpensive entry-level refrigerator, it might have a, a set of coils along the back, and there wouldn't be any fan. But on these uh, mid- to upper-end refrigerators, they make these coils a little bit more compact, and they stuff them underneath the refrigerator, which makes their ability to get uh, cooled from just the ambient air uh, next to impossible, so they have to add uh, a a fan. So I did the same thing with this fan. On the other side of this fan, when it's not running, between the blades and the and the the plastic part that houses all the internals for the electric motor, there's a part number. So all you have to do is look up that part number and find out what type of voltage this fan requires to run. And if it's AC, it's easy. So in my case, it was AC. And if you can see here, I just took the the, the plug, I unplugged it from the, the refrigerator plug, hooked up a couple of little connectors to it, and these connectors are going to uh, just a power strip. Now, I, don't, I don't recommend you just stick it in the outlet like this. Uh, use an extension cord and just cut the extension cord and then you hook it up this way. So, look, don't do this stuff if you guys, because uh, this is a fire hazard right here. So this is something that I don't, unless you're in an emergency situation and you need to get your refrigerator going again. I wouldn't recommend doing any of this stuff, but in a pinch, if you need to know how, this is how you do it. And with just these three things running, the inside fan, this outside fan that cools these coils, and the compressor, your refrigerator is cooling. And, and it will stay cooling so long as these three things have power. Anyway, that's how I was able to do it. The uh, next thing would be to replace the capacitor in the power control board, and we'll be doing that next. Now this is the uh, other part of the project. So this is going to be repairing the uh, capacitor that went bad on the power control board. Let me show you. Let me show you what I found. Uh, initially, I thought it was a dust issue, but then when I was inspecting the the power board, I noticed I noticed that. Uh, this capacitor right here is is bulged okay none of the other capacitors look like this one so I suspect that this capacitor is what went bad um, so
so I'm gonna take the remove these these uh, these plugs from the board and then I'm gonna have to uh, the board is held down with these um, melted plastic pins I'm gonna have to drill those out so we can remove the board to then unsolder this capacitor and replace it so this is a 470 ultra ferret capacitor um, and it's uh, minus 40 degrees to 105 degrees and it's 35 volts so let me uh, remove these plugs and get this board out of here and then we'll uh, desolder it and solder in a replacement okay so here's the here's the removed board and uh, now all of these all of these capacitors they're all gonna have a they're all gonna be charged and uh, and some of the, you could really get shocked by these things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna discharge all of these capacitors, and how I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna short them with this uh, screwdriver, and that should uh, discharge them. So we'll start with this this big one over here. I'm just gonna tap these two connections. Make sure it's discharged. Yep, that one's discharged. Uh, next one is gonna be this one next to it. Was discharged as well. Uh, what else we got? We got these two big ones over here. Discharge that one. Okay, another one here. Make sure that one's discharged. What else we got? Then we got these three here. These are the one. One of these is the ones we're going to replace. This one. So let's discharge them. One connection here. Uh, another set over here. And we got these these two over here. Okay, so now those are discharged. Do we have any more? No, that's oh these these two over here. All right, so let's get those. Now I know I'm not going to get shocked by this thing. So now let's uh, let's unsolder this guy right here. All right, guys, we'll be taking off. Uh, so these are these are the two pins we're going to remove. These two right here. So I'm just going to use my little solder desoldering tool. You just squeeze the little bulb, put it on your little pin. And once it's all warmed up, just let it go and it sucks out the solder just like that. So you see how the solder is removed right here on this one? So now I'm going to do this next one. Seventy ultra ferret, thirty five volts. And if you if you look carefully, if you look carefully at the board over here, it has a it has a like a little line. So that line is the negative side of this uh, capacitor it goes in this direction. So if you look at the capacitor. It has a stripe along one side. You see that stripe right there? So that stripe goes like this. It went like this. Okay, stripe facing the, uh, the negative side. So that's how it came out. So the new capacitor, that's how we're going to put it in. All right, guys, so we're going to replace the uh, capacitor. And what I got here is... Uh, this is what I was waiting on to arrive today. Now they sell these 
capacitors you can get, uh, you know, like a pack of five or something like that for, uh, I want to say between seven and, and uh, eight dollars or nine dollars. But this this whole little kit has got 320 different capacitors, and it brings 10 of the ones that I need, which is this uh, 470 ultra ferret 35 volt uh, capacitor. Uh, and the, the whole kit is 20 bucks. Uh, so I decided to just pick up this whole thing and then I have spare capacitors for other projects. So this is what we're going to replace. So let's uh, go ahead and replace it. And I'll put the links to all this stuff on my uh, in the description of the video. And then remember again, so this, this side with the stripe, that's the negative. So we're going to point that to the side on the board that has the stripe right there. So I'm just gonna straighten out these little pins. Drop it in there. And I'm gonna bend these guys out so they so it stays. I'm just going to solder it in there real quick. Where is my solder? I'm just going to trim off these little pieces here. And then we'll uh, go ahead and install it and check it, make sure that it's working. I'm going to do to refasten the board and I'm just going to put a little dab of hot glue on these corners so that it stays uh, in place and then we'll plug it in and check it. Alright, lastly all we got to do is just plug it uh, back into the cables that are coming out of the refrigerator. So I'm going to start with this one. So we're just going to we're just going to hook it up and just test it first before we button it all up. Anyway, so this first cable group of wires here so this is just going to plug in here and this little cable is going to plug into this little uh, this little thing right here right there 
these other two cables are down here. Got it all plugged in. Let's plug the refrigerator in and hopefully this will click and stay on. Alright guys, moment of truth. So right now um what we have is uh is is completely dead um display. The compressor is still temporarily isolated from the rest of the system along with the freezer fan and the condenser fan. But when we plug this power board back in um, and plug the refrigerator back to the wall, all of this, all of this stuff should, should start working again if we fix the problem. Um, so as you remember, what it was doing before is when I would plug it in, it would, it would click on, click off, click on, click off, click on, click off, and it would just keep doing that until it just stopped responding altogether. Uh, so I'm hoping that when I plug it in, it's going to click on. Uh, and stay on and all everything will work Then all we'd have to do is just go back and undo those isolated uh, parts that we have temporarily running connect them back to the uh, power board cables and we should be good to go Right, so that's that's good. It's not turning off. It turned on, and uh, we got our our alarm is on over here. Uh, let's see if our display is working. Yeah, we can switch. We got our temperature reading, so it's telling me the refrigerator is currently thirty seven degrees, and the freezer is uh, minus two or two. Alright guys, looks like we're back in business. Alright, let me go ahead and undo all of the temporary stuff. I'll unload the freezer compartment, uh, take that panel off, and I'll show you what I did in there. Uh, right now, currently, it might be running through a defrost cycle. I'm not sure. But anyhow, let me uh, shut it down, take all the stuff apart, put it back the way it's supposed to, and then we'll, we'll run one final test in the end. So far, so far it looks like everything's working. And to reinstall the power board, all we're doing is um, open, this, open this door up over here. So we can hook this thing up. Position these these cables back where they need to go. So this one uh, goes about there. And this one goes right around right about there. And then there's a uh, a retainer. So this retainer plugs in here. This module goes back in is um, it's got one one bolt that holds it up once you push it in so let's go ahead and get it in position
all right guys and that's uh that's how it bolts up so it has to you have to like have it up against the back and there's a couple of clips that grab the back part of the tray to keep it up off the floor and that's uh that's essentially it right there all right guys what i'm doing now is just reconnecting the uh the cables back to the to the refrigerator wiring took off the little temporary extension cord here Okay, another thing I had to disconnect was this, this uh, gate here. And what this thing does is like a little uh, door that opens and closes. And that's what allows the cold air from the freezer compartment to get into the refrigerator compartment. So when this thing uh, stopped working, the door was in the closed position, which means the refrigerator temperature reached whatever temperature it was designed to, to get to. And uh, the door closed. So I had to remove this to get the freezer uh, compartment air to come back over into the uh, refrigerator compartment. So I'm just gonna snap this thing back in and it just uh, goes just like this. So the thing just slides in here and then just pushes in. Okay, so once you, you gotta get the top, the top first and then the bottom will just fall in. So that, that's it right there. And then this little wire comes up and over the top just like this and plugs in right here just like that and then there's uh, this little cover that goes on top so you have this little cover that goes on there so you flip this up there's a hole back there for the screw and then just mount that cover up so let me let me mount the cover and, uh, and then I'll take apart the freezer compartment once you unload the uh, shelves and the bins what you have on the back here is you have this metal cover there's four screws there that need to be taken off and then four screws here and then one on the on the very top in the center here once you take all this off then there's uh, the coil and then the fan the fan is right behind here so let me go ahead and pull that off and then i'll show you guys what that looks like so here it is with the back cover off see that you have this this fan here so here's the fan that I uh, that I jerry rigged this is the 12 volt fan and it has um, four wires that come out of it so here are the four wires so this is the plug that uh, that's unplugged that powers it and then so right here what I have is uh, some uh, wire that I'm using to jump these connections, but the fan itself has see if you can turn it, has four wires on it. So you got the yellow, red, and the brown. The brown is the negative lead on your 12 volt power supply. The yellow and red are uh, joined together on the positive side. 
and then that's what will uh, get this fan running. The coil is completely frozen because uh, since Friday it has not run its defrost cycle. And what happens when it defrosts, it energizes this this uh, wire that comes down here. And this, essentially what it is, uh, it, it looks like an element in an oven. It runs down through their coil, uh, comes back up underneath. And you can see it looks just like an element for an oven. And then it comes right back up through here and uh, attaches to that sensor. So one side of it goes to the sensor, the other side goes to the uh, power board. Once this, once this sensor trips, uh, once it reaches the, the, the cold temperature to, to activate it, it shuts down the compressor and the compressor fan. And then it starts the defrost cycle. Plug the fan back into its uh, proper place and then turn it back on and make sure that everything is working before I put it back together. All right, guys, there it is. So it's, uh, it's running off of the power board now. So there the fan is running. I'm not sure if it's starting a defrost cycle yet or not, but uh, compressor's running. Turn the light on so you guys can see. Compressor's running, fan's running. Yep, compressor's running. Fan's running. It's uh, beeping that power uh, just got restored. And that's it, so it's, it's done deal. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble the inside, and uh, this is, this job is done. Uh, to pay somebody to come out here and fix this would have uh, easily cost, and this this refrigerator is out of warranty, so this easily would have been a $500 repair. Uh, I saw the part online; it's about 112 bucks. And then tax and shipping plus the installation if a professional wants to come out here and do the work. Uh, so we resolve this problem for seven dollars essentially, which is the cost of the capacitors, and then uh, just just some time. All right, guys. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Turn on your notification bell. Share the video. And leave me some comments. I love reading the comments. I respond as soon as I see them. Till next time, guys. God bless. Alarm is on. Lights are working. Ice makers back together. All the shelves are back in. All right. Back in business. Alright guys, thanks for watching.